What's good, YouTube? It's Mirror Voice, going back in another video. Today, let's talk about how to beat the Fur Hire deck. This is a very devastating deck that's seen a lot of popularity with the past couple of Nationals because with the Fur Hire engine, you're actually able to draw an additional three cards and put up a huge board of Sprite Negates as well as for Hire Interrupts in addition to your Runic Fountain, of course, which allows you to activate cards from your hand and draw a bunch of cards. So how this deck generally works is it relies on Rex Sprite for Hire, which is a three of, that's a level two, so it pairs very well with these Sprites. And what it does is when it's normal or special, you can add one spell for hire from your deck to your hand. And then the other effect during the main phase, if you control a for hire monster and it's in the graveyard, you can banish it, then target one for hire card in your graveyard and special summon it. So it's a very, very powerful card that has very powerful effects. And generally what you search off of that is actually rookie for hire, which allows you to tribute a monster and special summon a for hire from your hand or deck whose level is one higher or lower than tribute a monster on the field. So typically you would go into beat Bladesman for Hire, which is a one of. You basically max out on the Rex, and you also play one of, of the other main monsters to uh, take advantage of their effects that kind of bridge into each other. And this card allows you to add a for Hire monster from your hand when another for Hire is special summoned to your field. And then you also play Donpa, which allows you to pop a card when another for Hire is special summoned to your field. And the last main deck monster is actually Rafali, Champion for Hire, which allows you to excavate the top cards of your deck equal to the amount of for Hire monsters you control with different names. And then if you do, you can add one to your hand. So it's like a pseudo pot of prosperity or a pot of duality. And then it also has an Omni Negate monster effect. When your opponent activates a monster effect, you can discard a for Hire card to negate the activation. And they only play one of the Rookie for Hire, which allows them to kind of bridge into that off of Rex alone. But some decks are also playing Mayhem for Hire, which allows them to special summon a for Hire monster from their graveyard. So it's an additional interrupt. And they are especially good because of Donner Dagger for Hire. So you guys might be uh, know this card from Kashtira, but it actually has another effect where you contribute a monster and then special summon two for Hire monsters from your hand or graveyard with different names and the tribute monster. So you can actually tribute Dagger for Hire himself to bring back the beat Blazeman for hire as well as the Rex, which instantly triggers the effects, for example. So you would go Rex into the spell, into beat, and then make the Donner and start going into your engine of plays. And then of course, Fogo Justice for hire, which is a very powerful monster. When it's Link Summoned, you can special summon one monster for hire with a different type than the three monsters you used for Link Summon. It requires three monsters with different types. So you can actually make this quite easily, even with the sprites and also with some of your um, runic cards that are, uh, the fusion monsters, right? Because these guys are fairies. So all you need is different types. It's a lot like Curious. And then if a card that your opponent controls is destroyed by battle card effect, you can draw one card. Then if you control three or more monsters for hire with different names, draw two additional cards. So you can draw three cards off this card. It's very powerful. And the one thing that makes it especially powerful is you can typically end on an end board with Dompa, Marksman for hire on the table, and Rex in the graveyard. Rex can banish itself as a quick effect to bring back something. And then when it's brought back, Dompa will trigger to pop one of your opponent's cards. And then after that, Fogo will trigger to allow them to draw three cards. So it's very, very annoying to get rid of if you don't have any non-engine cards. Now let's dive in the hand traps and see what you guys can play to beat them. So starting off with Ash Blossom, typically with this deck, I think you should definitely cut them off from getting access to Rex because it's a lot like the Naturia Runic where like if they have both engines, they're probably playing, but if they're missing their main engine, then the deck's gonna be a lot, lot weaker. So if you can hit any way to get into Rex, for example, like even something like a Fossil Dig, I would argue potentially hitting that just so they're not guaranteed to have Rex. Alternatively, you could just hit other cards that allow them to sequence into Rex, something like a Gigantic. They're not always gonna open Rex, so when they don't, they're typically gonna try and go into it with a Gigantic. So then that way, when they have it in the graveyard, they can easily bring it back by making either a Donner Dagger for Hire, which is easy to make with two monsters with different types, or even making a Fogo with like uh, different uh, non for Hire cards to start their engine, right? The minute that they're able to resurrect Rex, it's kind of like how they tap into their engine and start searching their cards. So if you guys want to stop that, that's really good. You could also make an argument for stopping the Rookie for Hire with Ash when they attribute his cost. But the only caveat is there, they probably already have the Rex and then the Rex would search into this quick play. So you're already guaranteeing that they have Rex in the graveyard, which they can bring back with Donner, right? So just one thing to be aware of. Typically players are also playing Sprints as well to dump the Rex just so they have access. But I would say try to cut them off from the Rex access if you can. Alternatively, you could also use it on something like Runic Fountain to deny them the draw three. Okay. If uh, you guys are siding Ghost Spell, this is def definitely a decent card because it obviously stops Fountain from returning those cards and drawing. It stops as well Rex's effect by banishing it to Special Summon it for Hire, which is typically how they trigger the Dompa, which would trigger the Fogo, allowing them to draw three cards and also pop one of yours. 
And uh, there are also the Mayhem for Hire, which is something they might set. So Ghost Pile is actually not bad against this deck. It's definitely a lot more playable than it previously was. And against things like Mannequin Cat that a lot of players are playing as well. I know some players are choosing to uh, resurrect the Shifter, for example, so they can special summon a Chaos Hunter from their deck and continue playing. So even Ghost Spell would be valid against the Mannequin Cat, which prevents them from special summoning a monster from your graveyard. Troll and Lockbird is actually quite nice against this deck because you're obviously denying them of their draws off of Bogo and off of the Fountain, in addition to any other resources that they might amass off of either the sprites and or the for hires like these cards are always constantly adding right so just be aware of that even Rafali allows them to add from the top of their deck so that's like another add uh drone lockbird is actually very powerful i actually don't like drone lockbird but i think it's actually decently good against this deck because it stops them from playing for the most part they're only able to leverage the existing cards that they have to go into the link plays without adding from the deck so this could actually be a very potent side deck card against this deck if it starts seeing a lot more play in the metagame i would definitely recommend that obviously shifter is a very powerful card against these types of decks because it relies on the graveyard especially with the for hire engine which relies on resurrecting stuff from the grave including rex during your turn so it's definitely a good card if your deck can support it nibiru is quite bad against this deck because of the existence of gigantic sprite however they're not always going to have the luxury of going into gigantic sprite before the fifth summon it's a lot different than the other variants of the sprite deck where they're playing like live tunes or whatever and they're just easily able to go to gigantic a lot of times these guys actually have to uh, hold off on the gigantic in order to go to the rest of the plays which includes beat bladesman for hire which is level three and of course ref alley which is a level eight so them locking themselves out of their uh, level two or hires which gigantic really hurts them they can't even go to fogo which is a link three right so they're not gonna always go into gigantic with five summons but that being said they might have sprite red already on the board to protect so nibiru just becomes a card that trades with sprite red so that's just something to be aware of but if you're already main decking nibiru just bear in mind that this is relatively live against this deck uh, at certain points during the game for ghost motor moonlit chill effect veiler and infinite impermanence these cards are actually very very powerful against uh this deck because you can negate things that uh would allow them to start amassing resources for example even the getting the rex could potentially be decent because you're cutting them off from getting into the rest of their engine without making donner first so it's quite nice for that obviously this is a once per turn effect so if you're able to stop the search then they're not going to be able to special uh search again if they special summon a back late in the turn alternatively if it's your sixth card you could actually use it against fogo or even the donpa so that prevents them from uh drawing cards or popping your card in the case of impermanence of course and I find that obviously negating gigantic sprite when you have a chance to prevent them from getting to Rex is also very important if they open the subpar hand that doesn't have that. So it's quite nice. You could also make an argument to actually hit the Hugin just so they don't get the fountain. It depends on what your hand is. If you can't afford them to draw a bunch of cards and also be able to activate their quick play spells, then maybe you would just make an argument to hit the Hugin. But half the time uh, they're able to recover pretty easily just with the for higher cards and draw into fountain eventually. So I don't know if that's necessarily the best play, but it's just something that you could be aware of if you're so desperate that you just have to deny them from starting their runic engine. Data Crow is actually all right against this deck because you can hit back the target that they uh, target with Rex Fright for Hire on your turn, special summon back, or one of the targets off of the Donner Dagger for Hire. The one thing to know with Donner is that it actually does not target the monster that's special summoning from the hand or graveyard. So if you need to crow one of the targets, you're still going to be able to resurrect the other one if they have more names in the graveyard. So that's just one thing to be aware of. Also, it's not very good against Runic Fountain, obviously, because they're still going to be able to shuffle back the other two and draw two cards. So I actually don't think this card is that impactful against the deck, but you guys can kind of play around. It's nice that it is able to hit the Mayhem for higher, for example. It's nice that it's able to hit the card that it resurrects off of Rex, which is oftentimes the titular card that they need to start the Dompa engine and also start popping your cards and drawing off Fogo. Phantasma, I actually think, is a really good card against this deck, especially how we talked about previously that a lot of times they're not having the luxury to go into Gigantic before they go into their Link plays especially with things like Donner Dagger for Hire and then potentially later on Fogo. So you're going to be able to always have this live against this matchup, in my opinion. For the most part, you're able to just drop a Phantasma, draw multiple cards, and then fix your hand. And also have a 2400 that's very good against Runic cards that target, like Freezing Curses and also the Runic Destruction, which target your cards. So having this is quite nice to circumvent that on the following turn. Then, of course, Cosmic Cyclone, I think, is just such a solid card against this deck. You do have to avoid Carrot, obviously, being able to negate your Cosmic, but being able to just get rid of the Fountain at all means necessary is very, very nice. 
in my opinion. Also, you can bait out certain cards that they have set in their back row. For example, the Mayhem for Hire, if they're trying to trigger Donpa that way. For example, if they don't have like a way to use Rex and they have like a Mayhem set instead as a backup plan, then you could just Cosmic Cyclone there so they're forced to chain it and then they're not going to be able to get the effect of Donpa because that's a trigger effect that requires them to special summon for Hire. So it's kind of nice there. It has niche usage. And then Dark Ruler, of course, is one of the most solid cards against these type of sprite engine oriented decks because it negates sprite carrot, sprite red. Also, in this case, negating the effects of potentially Rough Alley, which would negate a monster effect, negating the effect of Dompa, which pops, and negating, of course, Fogel, which allows them to draw infinite cards and gain a lot of value. So yeah, that's about it in a nutshell, I think, for how to beat this deck. It's a very, very annoying deck. It's kind of newer. A lot of players don't really know how to beat it, so I would recommend definitely taking a moment to read the cards so you're familiarized with their engine, familiarized with the lines that they go into, and then you can kind of see like where to stop their choke points, how you can interact with this deck. But generally, as long as you're able to prevent them from getting into wrecks, if you're able to prevent them from summoning out monsters with Donner Dagger for hire and kind of starting to amass their resources off of the for hires, then you should be in a relatively good spot. And of course, if you have the removal for the fountain, which prevents them from drawing cards. So that's about it. If you guys have any tips to beat this deck, let me know below. And other than that, we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.